Welcome back and it's time for our very first hot topic. President Bola Tinubu is set to meet U.S. President Joe Biden on an exclusive invitation. The duo's meeting may be on the sidelines of the United Nations Assembly in New York, scheduled to run from September 18th to 26th, 2023. Um, it's starting today, actually. So um, he's in the U.S. for this meeting. We've been joined by Abraham Great, public affairs analyst. Good morning to you, Mr. Great. You nice to be with you once again. Glad to have you join us. And he's joining us from Canada this morning. Now, Mr. Great, um, U.S. Assistant Secretary for African Affairs, Molly Fee, uh, did reveal that um, President Tunu was the only leader in Africa so invited uh, for the special interface with the U.S. leader. Clearly, they'll be discussing Niger. The U.S. and France were seen putting pressure on ECOWAS to use uh, military force to reinstate um, the oyster uh, president, Mohamed Bazoum. Um, how do you see this, this meeting going? Do you see uh, Niger being the main reason for this special uh, exclusive invitation to President Tunubu? Um, I wouldn't think that is the main reason, you know, for the invitation. Nigeria in itself has a lot more uh, reason to be in America. America being one of the major uh, bilateral partners of Nigeria. It will be the first since his uh, inauguration as president. President Tinubu meeting with the president of America. Uh, that in itself, uh, President Tinubu needed in a way for its, uh, his own authentication with several things that has been going on around his presidency and stuff like that. Being in America in itself for every Nigerian president is a statement of its own. Now, at the back end of that, you have to understand that being the populous, uh, the number one black, uh, most populous black nation on the earth, it makes a lot of sense for America being the number one world power to meet with the most important president in Africa regarding the affairs of uh, AU uh, as well as uh, in terms of the region of West Africa where there has been a lot of coup. Um, it might not be the primary reasons why they will be uh, meeting Nigeria in itself. Nigeria it, itself will have an agenda for seeing the, the president of America, but this will be one of the main uh, agenda, as you cannot have America sit back and just watch what is going on around the world. And, you know, military intervention in West Africa may not be the only option, but if it should be, Nigeria and ECOWAS will definitely need the backing of the number one force on, uh, on the earth, which is America. So what are the ways you think such a meeting can be a social economic opportunity for Nigeria? Well, America being a large uh, economic country in itself needs Nigeria uh, you know, need Nigerian oil, need Nigerian gas, need so many things uh, from Nigeria. We um, America already enjoy a lot of human capital uh, from Nigeria. We know that a bulk of Nigerian diaspora uh, in America. So a bilateral relationship between the two countries, it will be for me what will be on uh, on on the. Uh, the forefront of the agenda like you could see with what the president did in india taking with him as many economic power in the house you know most of the billionaires in the country already see he will be meeting with apple he will be meeting with uh, microsoft he will be meeting with uh, general electric so there are so many things that the president is in america for to be able to attract foreign investment back into nigeria but is is that in your own um uh, if you were to set the agenda for this meeting uh, for the president, what would be top on your agenda? Uh, it shouldn't be like uh, what we heard from the UAE that he has gone, he has done the visa, uh, he has solved the visa problem, and the next day we saw that nothing like that was even discussed at all and all that. So if you were to set the agenda for this meeting between Joe Biden of America and our president, what would that agenda be? What would be topmost for you? 
first of all, I would like to correct the notion that um, you know that nothing like that was said of the visa ban with, between uh, uh, UAE, UAE and, and and Nigeria. There's nothing like that. That is completely far from the reality. A presidential statement will not come out when a pr president make a uh, a detour through through that country, and then there will be completely no. Uh, no truth to the fact that that was said. In fact, that is the major reason why the president was in America, uh, in the UAE. What you must understand about the UAE is that, and you can prove me wrong, they do not, their primary source of dissemination of news is not internet. So you might not see the UAE, uh, you know, categorically right anywhere that they have lifted the visa ban or so like that. Uh, uh, however, saying that, you know, whatever report you are seeing from CNN or what have you, it is not from the government. Both the one that said it's been lifted and both the one that said it's not been lifted, both information are coming from individual perspective. But the president himself, his spokesman have said, the minister of aviation have said, everybody who went with him have said, this was why they are in the country. We have no reason under heaven to just begin to uh, disbelieve such, uh, uh, you know, source of information. Now, when they have discussed those kind of information, it might take days to ratify. So they're trying to work out the, you know, the process. And then you see, one of the things that I've noticed about the president is that when you criticize him or you criticize his government, just a few days after, whatever you say, I mean, I'm sure by the time Emirate land in Lagos or Abuja or Etihad, and then people can travel, in the next few days, I'm sure people will be able to put that to bed. Now, if I, number one, I would not be in the position to set the agenda, but I would expect that whoever is setting the agenda to make the foreign policy the number one uh, thing on, on the agenda. Nigeria being, Nigeria has to reclaim its place. There has been a bit of uh, our clandestine uh, uh, move uh, between Nigeria and South Africa. And in terms of economic power and in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, military strength and everything, Nigeria should be the number one nation in Africa. Economically, we have, the, uh, we have it intelligence-wise. I'm sure you know this, that in terms of intel intelligence of the, uh, uh, of the Air Force uh, uh, and the Navy, you know, yes, you talk about uh, Algeria, you talk about Tunisia and stuff like that. But Nigeria has a bigger, bigger uh, um, force. So strengthening our uh, our foreign policy and strengthening our military uh, um, apparatus should be the number one there. We need America for the uh, to, to manufacture, to purchase equipment, aircraft, uh, fighter jets, and stuff like that. And num number two for me is in terms of bilateral arrangement that will bring in uh, uh, prosperity from America to Nigeria and from Nigeria to America. There needs to be a bigger fluidity. We lost a lot of bilateral relationship during the Obama administration. And that was on the premise, uh, you know, from American perspective, is on the premise of corruption. Remember, during President Jonathan, America has a lot of issue with Nigeria in terms of our oil dealings and stuff like that, corruption. They want us to put our house in order. And when they realize things were not going on, they begin to you know, play certain sanction in a way. That's when they withdrew the DV lottery visa and stuff like that. Now, under this presidency, we should be having a review of our bilateral arrangement. Even the treaty, the Freedom of Travel Treaty, the uh, the EB1 visa, E1 visa between America and uh, Nigeria needs to be on the front burner. Well, he said that the president is expected to push for global tax yeah, resolution. Yeah, let me just correct. Uh, uh, okay. Let me just say one thing before you say that. Sorry. Okay. Um, I just uh, let you talk um, uh, earlier on, but um, when the meeting in the UAE was held, uh, the presidential spokesman, uh, Julian, Julian mm -hmm. Glary, came out to say that the visa ban has been lifted. But the UAE government vehemently refuted that claim and said nothing like that has been done. The, the, the ban has not been lifted. We are hoping it will be lifted one day, but not at that meeting. Now, this was not said 
just to say that um, uh, it was a laughable thing or something. But the thing is that if we are going to be real about discussions that we want to put on the table, we need to know them. And whether we discuss them and arrive at a solution or not is another thing. But we shouldn't uh, say one thing was tabled when another thing was tabled. And definitely, what are the things that Nigerians are expecting the president to table before a powerful president like the president of America? That's why I asked the question. But in the real fact of it, uh, the, the, the claim by Nigerian government that that ban has been lifted has been refuted by the UAE. I just wanted to chip that in. For you I would to like know. to reiterate that, that the, the information you got, you see, I'm an immigration lawyer as well. Uh, the information you got is not coming from the UAE government. It's coming from a representative who spoke to CNN that I, I can again categorically say to you, the number one reason why the president was in the UAE is to resolve the, mon the, the issue of Etihad and Emirate not being able to fly into Nigeria because they were not able to repatriate their money. Nigeria did not solve that problem under the previous administration and the UAE visa, uh, visa ban, as well as rectifying the, you know, Nigerians who are living in the UAE because the minister, uh, the diaspora, uh, what's, it, what's the name again? The, uh, the, the uh, the woman in charge of diaspora, uh, uh, yeah, she has been back and forth on this issue also to try and help to ratify a lot of Nigerians are living in the UAE without papers. So I can categorically say to you, that is the major reason why the president was there. The misinformation and the back and forth, or maybe they've lifted, they've not lifted. The Arab world, particularly the UAE and Saudi Arabia, they have a different means of the dissemination of their own information. In fact, I always say this, and you're right on this, until an issue is completely resolved, I don't always trust Arab news or Arab information because they don't roll the way we roll. They don't play with social media the way we do. But they CNN, so CNN, which you said is where their representative went to give that information, is not social media. And if their representative... So who, who, it's not a government official from them. It is, I forgot the name of the person who went on CNN to make that clarity and one of the things we must put here is this there is a banter uh, uh, maybe it's opposition or what have you we, we have uh, uh someone that i admired a lot De uh, uh, daniel bala who first of all came and say you know immediately they said he's been lifted will refuse those, that's, those are opposition and if more forces are reinforcing the opposition view, it does not mean. So, uh, for example, I have a lot more inside information with people who were on that trip. And I can categorically tell you what I'm saying to you. Either it's been lifted or it's not been lifted. What I'm reiterating is that the major reason why the president was in Saudi Arabia was to ensure that that issue is, rat is resolved. The president left the, the, the president of EAU with an impression, with the affirmity that this issue has been resolved. That is why it's representative. But that is not the only reason why they're there. They also, see, I'll tell you this. The president, our current president, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, admires what has been done in the UAE. The visionary uh, leadership that has brought that nation that in the, I, I mean UAE is one of the countries I've been to a lot and when you travel between the 90s and now into the UAE the level of development that has happened in that country can be replicated elsewhere this president is very admirous of what they have done in the UAE and is partnering with the leaders there for his own leadership enhancement and for dreams for vision but I can tell you categorically one of the major reasons why he was there and he left with an impression uh with a consensus with those governments that this issue uh, will be ratified yeah well in the coming days we'll find out and uh, well that's not the issue on the table right now but we do hope that it will be resolved we like the body language we like how uh, the passion is for our governor or uh, our president um what we're asking today is it's 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 only natural that the people you're leading know what actually is taking you to where. And that's why I was asking the question, if you were to decide, 
what would you tell the president? I know you said that you were not the one to decide, but somehow uh, you are a Nigerian with insight, and we, we needed to know, to pick your mind a little bit and see uh, what you feel is priority for Nigeria. That's why the question came up. Oh, well, I, I'm glad that that was uh, well trashed out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important that, you know, it's trashed out. But let's talk about this uh, global tax resolution that President Tinubu is expected to push for. At Onga. Mr. Great, at Onga. Now, you, you, you have to understand that one of the greatest passion of President Tinubu is finance, uh, account, uh, taxation. is a very... Uh, now, the world rules... Most countries uh, have no natural resources like the United Kingdom and, uh, uh, you see, they, they, they thrive on taxation. And the president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, believes that there is a lot of uh, issue uh, that can be resolved economically between two countries and between the globe when the issue of tax is fixed. Going back to what you said, Usually, when a country invites another country, within the context, uh, the, the content of the letter of invitation, you will see the premise of the agenda in there. And I, 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 um, I haven't looked at the letter of invitation or uh, the, 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 the statement inviting President Tinubu into America, but I believe taxation uh, and the issue of global affairs is one of the major reasons why the invitation uh, has been sent to uh, President Bala Ahmed Tinubu. So on the issue of the global taxation, it will be good to see American perspective on how the issue of taxation, interest rates, inflation can be resolved on a global level. And this is very, very important, particularly with the nomination of um, a, 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 a supposed nomination of the new CBN governor. Now, for remembering that the, this particular nomination, uh, Mr. Yemi, uh, Chief Yemi Kadoso, is someone who had been part of the leadership of the uh, uh, the SWIFT banks, the global SWIFT bank, that is uh, the Citibank. So he understand the, the, the workings of global transaction, mm -hmm. global taxation, global uh, uh, exchange. So it is a very crucial time, and I wouldn't want to preempt what their conclusions will be, but I'm sure they'll be coming out with things like the reduction of interest rate, so reworking of the interest on loans. And in some cases, this might be similar to what President uh, uh, Obasanjo did during his time when he went around the G7, the G8, uh, the G20, even though Nigeria was not a member at the time, to renegotiate Nigerian debt. Remember, not only that for Nigeria then, even for many other African countries, these are part of the move that you'll be seeing uh, right now. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Uh, uh, let me talk about something that um, is it, it's, it's a bit related to this, but that, that's the new scramble for Africa's natural resources. When you look at how it's going, especially with France and, and, and the way they've been going about it, um, how would you say that African leaders should regain uh, their sovereignty from all this, um, I don't know whether to call them hawks, I think it's in, <laughs> in order because they're scavenging for Africa. They're scrambling for Africa. They're dividing Africa. And no matter what the agenda might have been uh, for the meeting, uh, we, shouldn't we use this opportunity to stamp our foot and say we too are a sovereign nation mm -hmm. and negotiate from a point of strength rather mm -hmm. than of weakness, like yeah. we're going cap in hand begging for these people? Yeah. Abraham, you want to talk about this? Yeah, you see, first of all, we, the, I, I'm going to use an analogy for this. When we were younger, if you are, if you are eating on the table with your siblings and uh, you are much older than your siblings, sometimes you can be wiser than them to take the meat and, you know, to blind their eyes, tell them to close their eyes. You see, Great. African eyes are <laughs> closed for too long while the big brothers have taken the meat off the table. Mm. But Africa is no longer a child, particularly Nigeria. The biggest thing that has happened to the world is not education, but enlightenment. And the internet has contributed a lot to enlightenment. 
So a lot of resources for research, for development has come around the world. And the number one beneficiary of this information are Nigerians. In America today, you realize that Nigerians are the most educated. So what we don't know, when you hear this saying in the past, that if you want to hear, hide anything from a black man, put it in a book, even though that statement is not completely true, I mean, right now, with the advent of the internet, since the, the, the mid-90s, informations have become a lot more prevalent and Nigerians have taken advantage of that. Now, I can say to you, Nigerians are of full knowledge of how the world runs right now. And this is why you see that America and any other country cannot do what they're doing in the Francophone countries with Nigeria because what those African countries are experiencing now, Nigeria experienced it after, in, immediately after independence. So you will see, for example, if you read uh, maybe this book by Aaron Smith, I've read several times and give so many people, you will understand that when, when uh, uh, after, by, by the time Nigeria was negotiating and Africa was negotiating for independence, the administrators of those, uh, uh, of those uh, independence clandestinely put together documents that put these countries in chains. For example, giving power to one zone, making the other zone look supreme to, to the other. Mm -hmm. You know, the issue of even the am amalgamation in 1914, a lot of these things were intentionally done to be sure that this country would take too long for their eyes to open and to see. Now, when you see war happening in countries, when you see coup, we also understood from administrators like this and from someone like Max, uh, let me, uh, what's his name again? Yeah, you know, Max, uh, Maxillion, what Britain did to America, you will understand a lot of things that have been done clandestinely to make the world inequitable. Right. Now, when you see people like this president, who from the 1990 fought for his country to go back into democracy, I'm talking about President Bola Tinubu, without riot, without fighting, without anchor, he is someone that is astute in how the world wrongs. And this is the time that we have to refix the world to be equitable because we know what the West is doing. But it's not going to happen because we do, Africa do not have the might to go against the West in terms of military force. It will have to be done by dialogue. It will have to be done by rearrangement. It will have to be done by sitting on the table and re renegotiating our natural resources. I am of the opinion that there are still so many secret and clandestine pipes that run between Nigeria and many West African countries and many African countries taking away the resources of those countries into many countries around Europe. Uh, 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 we can't see America because the distance is too far. But the world is so inequitable that the leaders now have to start sitting on the table because there seems to be rebellion from, uh, uh, <laughs> from Africa. Now, watch this. What West African Francophone countries are sorting out today, Nigeria has sorted them out in the 90s. That's my point. Mm. You know, so and it's not completely sorted out. And this is one of the reasons why we should be on the table and ratify uh, issue of bilateral relationship to be sure that the world is more equitable. Mm. So it's not only the President Tinubu is not only there for Nigeria, is also there to speak on behalf of Congo on behalf of Niger, on behalf of uh, Côte d'Ivoire, uh, and stuff like that, to, to ensure that the world is equitable. Yeah, but in your own opinion, like you said, negotiating table uh, is what should be the answer to everything. Uh, but do you think we, will go, we are going to negotiate from a point of strength? And if it is a point of strength, what do you think is that uh, strength that we are going to do? Because a lot of things over the years that have come from the West seem to be things that they can use now to, uh, forgive the word, blackmail us or just hold us to ransom. We have taken so much loans. We have taken so much uh, uh, support from here and there every time we are going cap in hand and all that. And they have that against us. So what point of strength are we going to be negotiating with the Western countries with? Uh, first, I'm going to say to you after this question, I'm going to take about maybe 20 seconds to adjust my battery, <laughs> uh, which that's 
And the point of strength cannot be established until you have financial strength. Nigeria will be negotiating from the point of knowledge, from the point of enlightenment, from the uh, point of intellectual powers. But, a, uh, you know, it is the scriptures that says that the borrower is subject to the lender. You don't have strength when you don't have money. If you don't have the economic power, you, don't, you are not strong. The reason why Saudi Arabia, Qatar, as small as those countries are, the reason why they can bully and talk back at America is because of their financial strength. Nigeria is not yet at that point because we are holding World Bank, we are holding uh, I, uh, uh, IMF, and so many, you know, uh, we are holding China and stuff. We are just beginning to reposition ourselves financially. And I think we can get there. So we, I mean, this is not going to be the only meeting that will happen between America and Nigeria. This is the first of many between these two presidents and many other presidents. I will say that we are going, first of all, in the position of knowledge, in the position of willingness, in the, uh, the position of exposition, we are exposed. This team that we have in this government right now, they are financially exposed. We also have one, a, a Nigerian, you know, uh, uh, Okwenjo Awela, you know, at the helms of our, our global financial affairs. So we are now negotiating in the position of strength, and we will wait to see uh, how far we go uh, with that. Yeah, and the position of strength also constricting also, though we may not have the kind of money, as you said, but we do have resources that they need and they will continue to need. Perhaps that is the part of the strength that we should be negotiating with, uh, you know, from. And, and look at what BRICS have achieved. You know, Transactions in you know, national currencies. West, yeah. yeah, so uh, I think we do have some kind of strength that we can also negotiate with when we sit at those international tables and discuss as equals, not as, you know, yeah, a lesser if, power if, if or keep, a lesser people. If we keep waiting for that time, we will have money. We yes. will never have the strength because they will keep doing some things that will keep us impoverished. That is how it is. So we have the... What we have has, our own kind what of has power. UAE got on us? Because we have oil as well. Exactly. We have all the, we have and gold. We have so many we things. We have uranium. We have everything. And then we're still a country without money. So. Abraham, great. Always great yeah. having you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so okay, your mic is still this. on. Just a quick one so yeah, that we wrap up. Yeah. Okay, so let's wrap up on a yeah. final note. Okay, now I want you see there is a scripture that I love uh, again today. I'm just using scripture. It's good. It's he good. said that man does not roast uh, uh, is kill. Uh, you see when what we have is fantastic. What we have is tangible. What we have is uh, but our return on investment, our return on resources, has been eaten by greed, by misnegotiation and stuff. So so we are not converting resources into prosperity. So we are at the position right now, you said we have gold, we have this. We have gas, but we have not even extracted them. We are now building the infrastructure. And when I mean that we do not have money, what I'm saying that we first of all need to go back minimum. The minimum requirement for me, for this country, mm. is to go back into what President Obasanjo did by renegotiating Nigerian debt. In fact, in some cases, was nearly wiped out. Mm -hmm. And I, I trust this presidency that we can get to a point, first of all, right now, within two, uh, three months of his presidency, Nigeria credit rating has gone from you know negative to positive that's a good sign and so then our debt has also gone up within the last three months by 75 percent now debt going up was as a result of we are now borrowing not to just for frivolity we are now borrowing for capital uh, 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 infrastructure we're now building infrastructure we're building pipes we're building uh, gas we are taking our natural grass right now through Niger to Algeria into Europe. We are now we are saying we want to compete with China, with uh, Russia. We want to be able right now. We're dealing with our raw material to be able to sell. 
So when you are borrowing in this case, and I have not seen under this government any form of borrowing. In fact, one of the things that they have reiterated is that they are not going to borrow for capital in the expenditure any longer. So you are seeing all kinds of idea, and I will say that it's still, you know, it's still, uh, it's too too early to ever judge uh, this government by anything at all. These are the phases of renegotiation, uh, renegotiation, you know, uh, uh, what, what interest rate, and so many other things that will make it easy on Nigerian finance. Thank you, Abraham. Great. It's as I was saying, it's always great to have you on the show. And I do like the confidence that you have on President Ahmed Tunubu. We are all rooting for him and hoping that we we'll see a better country. That is really the goal. That is a dream and vision for all Nigerians. A better country that we can all be proud of. Thank you for your time, Abraham. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. All right, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we'll take a break now and come back with our second hot topic. There with us.